It's a good moment, Professor Dash, who published a lot of work on adaptive kidney disease in front of us. One of the few people who are still in the conference and without whom conference cannot run. So thanks, Banshi, for this invitation. When we started our career in medicine, early 60s in medical school, the diabetes kidney disease was hardly known by one, Chimel steel wilson syndrome. And all of us thought that probably that is the only condition. I published my first paper in a journal, what was popular at that time, Dr. Ajigaonkar used to publish that, the Diabetic Society of India, 1978. I did my first publication on renal histology in diabetes. And we did kidney biopsy. And that was the time when we become aware there could be something else other than the Camel Steel Wilson, like sclerosis, nodular sclerosis, mesangial matrix hypertrophy. And this concept was broken by Jean Hamboje, one of the persons from the France who did the first live kidney transplant in France. 1952. What today we understand is it is not the chimel steel, it's a very bad thing to have chimel steel wheel syndrome. By that time, hardly these patients can be revived back, brought back to. So the gate, most strong gate man, as Dr. Chawla was here a few moments before, preventing the commotion, is the podocyte. Is the two different embryological evolution from kidney has come, the LN twice which is an ectodermal memory from the ectoderm. And ectoderm, by the evolution of cellular biology, is the strongest cell, epithelial cell. It has an all memory right from the proteo animal, which is called the unicellular animal, to the mesodermal origin. And that's the reason why it is so strong. So podocyte has evolution from the tubular system, the Bowman's capsule, the mesium has come from the mesoderm. So ontogenically, phylogenically, ectoderm is more strong in the communication, in the preventing, it knows a lot. And therefore, the podocyte comes from the, is important discipline in understanding the pathophysiology of kidney disease. It is related with the CKD, DKD now, and many more immune mediator system. As I said, it maturates from the s shaped loop and forms the head. And my teacher, Professor K.B. Johnny, used to taught us how a capillary loop can grow within the mesoderm. And in the mesoderm, it brings a part of the loop system and makes the effacement of the best friend membrane. And how it develops into the four stage, like renal vesicle, and ultimately the capillary loop, and then mature into the full glomeruli. There are intrinsic factors and extrinsic factors affecting the physiology of the podocyte. And one of the important factors is the obesity hyperfiltration, which we all think now in the diabetes, and acute ischemia, thrombosis, immunological, and metabolic. It develops because of multiple factors. Ultimately, what you see, microalbuminuria, by the time microalbuminuria sets in, enough damage has been done. So you, you, you presume that you prevent microalbuminuria, you are going to reward diabetic nephropathy. Probably that's not true. But ultimately, metabolic milieu can be changed. That's what we have learned. Hyperglycemia, mesangial expansion is one of the war area which we were observing and then followed by basement membrane thickening, anti interstitial fibrosis. This word you will listen in the next 10 years. This is called epithelial mesenchymal transition. When there is a war and infantry comes to the attack, then the military, the person who operates, keeps on changing. The infantry which loses life is suddenly changed, and the next person, even doctors, medical personnel, is taught how to fight the war. So what happened during this change of the podocyte damage? There's a phenomena. This is replaced, and it goes into the matrix. This is the epithelial mesenchymal transition, which is a biological process that allows the 
epithelial cell to migrate and they carry their memory. They carry their memory how to fight and prevent it. So ultimately the podocyte matures out of the epithelial cell, goes close to basement membrane, tries to obstruct the filtration barrier, which is the epithelial barrier, endothelial barrier is only 19 Armstrong, the pore size. You have albumin, which is a bigger molecule, 110 Armstrong. So it doesn't get into until unless you damage that pore. And that pore can be damaged by many processes. We'll come to that process. On my other side, this is what you see. This is the ultra structure, and these are the real structure which have been shown. This is the cap. This is the podocyte cap, the larger cap, which prevents the, which prevents the damage. This is the normal physiological, and this is during the adaptive change into the milieu. Not only the podocyte, but it is the also trauma to the mitochondria. Now we understand a lot of information on the mitochondrial cytopathy, mitochondrial damage, the power where the ultimate glycolysis takes place. And that would change, and there are the mitochondria change in the mitochondrial dynamics, like autophagy, mitophagy, biogenesis, the energy conservation, the lipid metabolism, and the immune process, all would be affecting the podocyte. And podocyte is the gatekeeper. If you don't keep a very strong gatekeeper, there are chances the protein molecule would escape and will move into the mesangial matrix. This is the interaction of podocyte on the endothelial cell, and these are the reasons which produces the changes into it, like vascular endothelial growth factor, ischemia. ET1 is very important, endothelin 1 is going to be an important key regulator factor. And I'll tell some of the drugs which are, would be acting here. So, hyperglycemia, ED1, hypoxia, and xanthine oxide inhibitor, uric acid, all produces damage and they are exposed exosomes pro appropriate factors which are responsible for the autophagy. Lot of other factors. These are the known factors. There are some unknown factors like the some of the proteomics, some of the biological markers, some of the other factor, some of the as simple as urine sample. This is called liquid kidney biopsy. Now people look at the urine think it is like doing a kidney biopsy. And our great teachers used to sit with microscope and slide for hours together to demonstrate. And you can look into the typical molecule who are the responsible for the podocyte damage. So this is an interaction of the angiotensin system, which is the physiological system for the balancing. Then the insulin excess, insulin resistance, adiponectin, the oxidative stress, the hypertrophy, effacement, and apoptosis lead to the damage. So the injury constitutes of either there could be still no change in podocyte morphology, and still you have proteinuria, still you have a damage, still you have microalbuminuria, and a lot of physics is involved into it. The charge of the basement membrane, which is a protein, a silo protein, albumin is a protein, it ripples each other, protein doesn't come, can't get filtrated. But when there's a hyperglycemia, and you remember your high school intermediate practice, you take the glucose in the test tube, put a amino acid, protein, heat it, it makes glucosamine. Glucosamine is a hygroscopic substance. It erodes the epithelial cell, and it produces a damage. And from there, the story starts. So there could be a no change in the podocyte number, like minimal change. That could be podocyte detachment with sclerosis. That could be podocyte proliferation. So you get extra capillary proliferation. You get crescentic glomerulonephritis that could coexist with diabetes disease. So the single nephron hypothesis, this is Bricker hypothesis, who was the president of the International Society of Nephrology, where a single nephron gets tested three, four, ten times with other kidney damages. It is associated with hyperfiltration driven by enhanced proximal tubular glucose sodium reabsorption. That's what the role of SGLTs led to reduction in afferent arterial resistance and have a role to play. This is the new science, podocytopathy. Your discipline might you listen about it. Where there could be podocytopenia, there could be 
lead to the hyperfiltration, looking at the change in the morphology, and the number of podocytes decrease in the glomerular patient with type 1 diabetes all ages. So that's, that's the reason why you type 1 diabetic patient have always invariably probability of getting a nephropathy much earlier than type 2 diabetes. Biopsies from Puma Indian type 2 diabetes demonstrated subject with clinical nephropathy and detachment of hepatocytes involved in the process of podocyte loss. Effacement. This is what you will keep on reading very frequently in the histology. This is the result of retraction, widening and shortening of process. It's a mechanical change into the morphology. There could be change in the slit diaphragm I taught you before, change into the interface, acting cytoskeleton or alteration of the negative apical membrane domain of protocyte. That's why the protein comes and gets adsorption, not absorption. It adsorbs on the basement membrane. That could be indeed production of the collagen, activation of PA pathway, vascular endothelial growth factor, expression of P catherine, and increased C-type NP induced production of cyclic GMP, enhancement of mechanical stress, induced glucose uptake. There can be very high angiotensin 2 turnover. That's why A's and beta have changed the whole approach towards the management of diabetic nephropathy, expression of SD complex, proteinuria, increased excretion of post. I said, you can watch, you can watch with the slide and a good pathologist can look into the uh, simple ultra uh, microscopy, light microscopy, and can tell about the podocyte in the urine, intracellular calcium activity, and various growth factor. This TG beta modulated action into the production of collagen as well as the MPPC and endothelial growth factor. These are the mechanical strikes, proliferation, intracellular and angiosynthesis system, reversible reorganization of the acting cytoskeleton and increased COX-2. Endothelin I was talking to is a very, very powerful factor for the regression of the epithelial slit pore from where the damage starts. And then this vasoconstrictin and mitogen has an important role to play in diabetic kidney disease as well as into the podocyte damage. Uh, I've already talked to you, this is the autophagy. And then now we come to the expression of proliferation of podocyte, high glucose. As I said, and we have done also this, uh, you take the high glucose, you put the podocyte cell and look at the various signal. This is what you see. As we increase the glucose concentration over the period of two weeks, you get increased expression of endothelin lipase and UDP glucuronyl transferase. These are two enzymes which are responsible for increased expression in the podocyte damage. These are the drugs where you can, in future, and some of the drugs are known, like ARBs, they act on the port of site, to 81. They are the prednisolone, very old one, and it's still one of the explanations why in minimal change nephropathy, where complement is normal, all IGs are normal, you cannot demonstrate any biochemical change, it's still prednisolone work, and this is the answer why prednisolone work, because of the podocyte preventive property. Then there are the drugs like uh, rituximab, there are drugs like monoclonal antibody, aculeamab, endothelial growth factor antagonist, PPR4 agonist, AZ inhibitors. All these drugs have potential role to modify the podocyte function. This is the specific NOx4 deletion renoprotection of the podocyte. This was published in February 2016, Diabetologia, and this is the protein specific molecule which can stop the excretion of protein and can ask the podocyte, uh, can refer to the podocyte health. This is the CXCL2 blockade preferentially regenerates a lot of, of the podocyte. So, there's another molecule in the pipeline. You will listen all these molecules like emeglin, you have already. Uh, we started using it. This is the ATG, anti-thymoglobin treatment, mitigates the proteinuria and the glomerular injury in, of the podocyte injury. And these are the examples. This is the ATG treated. This is non-ATG treated. And it's the protocyte rat and demonstrate the production of protocyte. This also reduces the protocyte injury and the loss of diabetic ENOS 
these are the two slides. This is the, the normal. This is look at the photo site. These are the lost photo site. These are the photo which are regained. This is protein S factor against photo site injury in diaptic nephropathy. And this is the expression which increases. And look at the histology here. This is the diaptic histology and then followed by the regaining normal property. This is the GLUT4 deficient mice, protocyte specific GLUT4 deficient mice, which have shown the protection. And the GLUT4 deficiency protocyte affects the protocyte nutrient sensing, resulting fewer and larger cells and protects mice from the development of adaptive nephropathy. So I've given you the four drugs in the future, which could be potential drug to be used. And next DGCI meeting, and Dr. A.K. Das would be finding these drugs for the use in India. Therefore, to summarize my presentation, uh, podocyte is an integral member of the filtration barrier in the kidney disease, is a unique geographical position exposed to chemical signal from the urinary space, receives, transmits chemical and mechanical signal, chemical and mechanical signal from the vascular space, as derived from the visceral epithelial cell, and is a long-standing poorly controlled diabetes mellitus can cause a property. Hyperglycemia, detachment, decreased production, endothelial growth factor, protein S specific molecule, ATG, and CX2. These are the four possible molecules which are in the pipeline, and they could come to you. Thank you very much for your listening.